Hi friends, John Haverstick here with another Adobe Lightroom tutorial today. Today we're going to look at a process for creating photorealistic HDR or high dynamic range images using Lightroom and Adobe Photoshop CS6's Merge to HDR Pro module. Now I'm a big fan of HDR and have been uh, a, a great fan of the third-party plugins for HDR processing, particularly the NIC HDRFX Pro 2 from NIC Software and Google and uh, Photomatix Pro from HDRsoft.com. What I have found though in using those third-party plugins is that as much as I try, I tend to get a little more painterly or surrealistic sort of processing of my HDR images than what I really am looking for. Well, I came across this process recently of using Lightroom and Photoshop's uh, Merged HDR Pro process and then doing the tone mapping step, that's the rendering of the image the way you want it to look uh, in the end, using Lightroom's develop module controls, which are in fact Adobe Camera Raw uh, controls for exposure and highlight recovery and shadow and all that sort of thing. And what I'm finding is that that gives me much more the look I'm looking for. Uh, it's a much more photorealistic, less processed look than what I'm getting even on the less aggressive end of the third-party plugins. So I want to show you that process here today. So here we have a series of bracketed exposures. Uh, let's go to the grid view in Lightroom. Bracketed exposures from a, a really cool shoot out at the Chino Airport here in Southern California. This is a rare opportunity to photograph a P-51 Mustang airplane alongside a 2012 uh, Ford Boss 302 Mustang. Two rare birds together uh, in one shot. You just couldn't get any better than that. But harsh morning light, clear skies here in Southern California. Uh, you're just a nasty for shadows. Perfect situation for HDR to really capture the details in both shadows and highlights of this very contrasty scene. So I bracketed uh, nine frames with uh, one stop uh, exposure difference between each. I would like to have done fewer frames with two stops between, but my particular Nikon cameras will only do one stop between exposures. So I have nine frames from the sequence. And I'm going to start here in, in Lightroom. Uh, one thing that you want to be sure of before you, you do this, though, is that your preferences for editing in your uh, external editor, which in my case is Photoshop CS6, uh, is set up to edit as a TIFF file. Now, I wasn't set up that way until I started doing this process. Normally, I would edit in Photoshop as a PSD. But in order for this process to work, you need to send your images out of Lightroom into Photoshop as a TIFF file file. The uh, next to the latest version of Adobe Camera Raw, that is Camera Raw 6.7 or later, allows you to process 32-bit TIFF files, but they do need to be TIFF format. So in your preferences in Lightroom, just be sure that your external editing is set up to send your images out as TIFF files. With that done, I'm going to go back here and select my nine images out of the bracketed sequence here and right click then on one of those selected images and choose edit in and from the sub menu I'm going to choose merge to HDR Pro in Photoshop and this will open up uh, Photoshop if it's not already open or just take you there to the uh, merge to HDR Pro module in Photoshop it's going to open up all of the images and attempt to align them uh, which is certainly something that you want to do. These were shot on a tripod so hopefully there isn't you know any significant movement or, or uh, misalignment between the images but just in case uh, it will attempt to auto align them. Uh, now if you've ever done HDR in Photoshop's HDR Pro module you know that it's pretty awful. In fact, that's why most folks use the third-party plugins from Nick and Photomatix and other, other manufacturers, because Photoshop, while it does HDR, the awful job of it. But what it does do really well is image alignment, and in our case, really all we're going to use it for is to create that 32-bit TIFF file that we can then bring back into Lightroom to manage the, uh, the tone mapping step, that is the rendering of the image. Uh, the, the revealing of the highlight and the shadow detail and all that sort of thing. So we're going to let it go ahead and, and uh, build its 32-bit HDR file here. It's going to take a moment for it, so I'll be back in just a second to, uh, to walk you through the rest of the process. 
And here we have it then in Photoshop's Merge to HDR Pro module. Now you can see that it looks pretty horrendous here. This is just a preview. It doesn't really have any bearing on what the finished image is going to look like. So don't worry about anything here. The only things that you need to really look for at this stage of the process are up here in the upper right corner of the module. Um, generally, you're going to want to click Remove Ghosts. So if you had any movement, if you had leaves blowing or people walking through the scene or things like that, Remove Ghosts will often take care of any uh, sort of stuttered or staggered or ghosty uh, sorts of artifacts from that movement in the images or between frames. Uh, the other thing that you want to be sure of here is that you choose 32-bit as the mode from the drop-down menu here. If you were going to do your tone mapping stage in Photoshop, uh, you would choose 16-bit and that would give you the various options for tone mapping. We don't want to do that. We want to use Lightroom's camera raw adjustments for this process. So we're just going to create our 32-bit uh, file here in Photoshop Merged HDR Pro process and then we're going to use Lightroom to do our actual tone mapping. So just confirm remove ghosts and 32-bit is set here. Click OK and this is going to drop us back into Photoshop uh, into Photoshop's editing space. The image is still going to look pretty awful when it gets into Photoshop, but we're not really going to do anything with it in Photoshop either. All we're really going to do is save it as a TIFF file. We won't do any processing in Photoshop proper. And here we are back in Photoshop's editing space. As you can see, it's a single layered TIFF file. Still looks pretty uh, horrendous, but we're not going to do anything to it here. We're just going to save this file. So I'm going to choose File, Save. And because I came out of Lightroom, when I close this, it's going to take me right back to where it originated from in Lightroom. So let's go back to Lightroom. And you see here we go, here's our TIFF file. And I'm going to mark it uh, with just a green uh, flag so that we can identify it quickly and easily from the group of raw files uh, that it's associated with. And if we open it up then into uh, Lightroom's develop module, you see we have all of our typical develop controls here, which are the camera raw sliders uh, that we would have in Adobe Camera Raw or that you're familiar with in Lightroom. We can tweak our exposure, we can tweak our uh, highlight recovery, which is going to be sort of the, the first thing that I want to do here to kind of bring back some of the detail in that aluminum of the P51. Bring up some of the shadow detail there again. This is a very, very contrasty scene to start with. I might uh, punch up the blacks a little bit, bring up the clarity just a little bit, some of the mid-tone detail. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other stuff that I could do here, but the point is that I now have all of the advantages of the uh, HDR process, that is the bracketed exposures, uh, but with the added advantage of being able to tone map that with controls that I'm familiar with in Lightroom using the Adobe Camera Raw sliders much more intuitive for me as a Lightroom and Photoshop user than the settings in the third-party plugins. It gives me a much more controlled approach to processing and the end result, as I'll show you here in a second, is a much more photorealistic look than what I could get from the third-party plugins. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial for creating photorealistic HDR images from Lightroom and Photoshop. Stop back again soon for another tutorial and tip and trick and other really cool helpful stuff from John Haverstick Photography.